The Alcatraz story revolves around the history of Alcatraz Island, a small, rocky island located in the middle of San Francisco Bay in California, USA. Alcatraz is best known for its role as a federal prison from 1934 to 1963, housing some of the most notorious criminals in American history. Alcatraz Island was initially inhabited by Native American peoples for thousands of years. The Olone people were among the first known Native American inhabitants of the San Francisco Bay Area, and they used the island for various purposes, including hunting seabirds, fishing, and gathering plant resources. In 1775, Spanish explorer Juan Manuel de Ayala sailed into San Francisco Bay and named the island La Isla de los Alcatraces, which translates to the Island of the Pelicans. This name reflects the abundant bird life on the island. Recognizing the strategic importance of San Francisco Bay, the U.S. military decided to fortify key locations, and Alcatraz was among them. The island's location in the middle of the bay made it an ideal site for a fortress to defend against potential naval threats. Construction of Fort Alcatraz began in the 1850s, and the fortress became one of the most powerful coastal defenses on the west coast. The fortification included gun emplacements, barracks, a guardhouse, and other military structures designed to house and protect soldiers and their equipment. During the Civil War, 1861-1865, Alcatraz Island served as a military prison where Confederate sympathizers and prisoners of war were held. The military prison on Alcatraz housed a diverse group of prisoners, including soldiers, political prisoners, and citizens accused of disloyalty to the Union. Fort Alcatraz was equipped with artillery pieces aimed at defending the bay against potential threats from enemy ships. The heavy cannons placed on the island were intended to deter and repel naval attacks. As military technology evolved, traditional coastal fortifications like those on Alcatraz became less relevant. This military history laid the groundwork for Alcatraz serving as a federal maximum security prison from 1934 to 1963. It housed some of the most notorious criminals of the time, including Al Capone and Robert Stroud, the Birdman of Alcatraz. The prison was known for its harsh conditions and the belief that it was impossible to escape from the rock. Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers with Alan West had crossed paths in previous prisons, drawn together by their shared notoriety as escape artists. They found them themselves incarcerated on the remote island prison, Alcatraz. United by desperation, they conceived a plan that would either secure their freedom or sin. Frank's sharp mind landed him in the library. John and Clarence worked in the laundry and Alan found himself in the art room, a position that would later prove pivotal. Alcatraz was no stranger to tension and rivalries. Inside the prison walls, alliances formed and enemies lurked. The group of friends navigated the complex social dynamics, keeping their plan hidden from both inmates and guards. Day by day, they observed the routines, learned the ins and outs of the prison, and bided their time. The heart of their plan lay hidden within the pages of the prison library. Blueprints of Alcatraz became their map, guiding them through the labyrinth of cell blocks and corridors. Frank Morris, with his keen intellect, deciphered the intricate dance they would perform. The plan was audacious, but meticulous preparation would be their only chance at success. Their preparations began with stolen raincoats, carefully stitched together in the dead of night to create makeshift life vests. Alan, utilizing his artistic skills, crafted fake heads from soap, toilet paper, and real human hair. These heads, eerily realistic, would later play a crucial role in their escape plan. The harmonious tunes of an accordion, a makeshift instrument crafted from prison scraps, echoed through the cell blocks. One of the friends, perhaps Frank, played the accordion loudly to conceal the sounds of digging behind the vent. It was a symphony of defiance, a secret concert that became the soundtrack to their clandestine activities. Time passes slowly, marked by the echoing footsteps of guards conducting routine patrols. The harsh clinks of cell doors closing resonate through the penitentiary. The friends synchronize their movements, working in silence under the cover of darkness. However, as the fateful night approached, an unexpected challenge emerged. The opening they had dug through the prison walls was too small for Alan to fit through. 
A somber decision was made. Alan, the quiet forger and artistic soul of the group, would stay behind, becoming the unsung hero who kept watch as his friends embarked on their daring journey. On the night of the escape, as the fog enveloped Alcatraz, Frank, John, and Clarence embarked on their makeshift raft. The cold waters of San Francisco Bay welcomed their daring bid for freedom. The echoes of paddles slicing through the water faded into the mist. The morning after the escape, chaos erupted within Alcatraz. Guards discovered the fake heads in the beds, sounding alarms that reverberated through the prison. Frank, John, and Clarence had successfully fooled everyone, leaving behind an empty cell block and a baffled administration. The manhunt that followed was relentless. The cold currents of San Francisco Bay had swallowed their trail, but the authorities spared no effort in searching. Newspapers buzzed with headlines about the audacious escape, capturing the imagination of a nation. In the midst of the manhunt, a perplexing letter arrived at the office of the San Francisco Chronicle, penned by one of the escapees. In the media sensationalized the escape, detectives worked tirelessly to unravel the enigma. The story took on a life of its own, with theories and speculations swirling in the public domain. The search for Frank, John, and Clarence became a national obsession. Yet the escapees remained elusive. The media frenzy continued, but the details of their whereabouts remained hidden. The letter, a cryptic clue, added to the puzzle, leaving both detectives and the public perplexed. Frank Morris, John Anglin, and Clarence Anglin were placed on the FBI's wanted list. Following their disappearance in 1962, the FBI initiated an extensive manhunt to locate and apprehend the escapees. The investigation into the escape involved interviewing family members, friends, and acquaintances of the escapees. Detectives sought any insights that could shed light on the escape plan or provide clues about the escapees' intentions after leaving Alcatraz. However, family members maintained that they had no knowledge of the escape plan and were as surprised as the authorities by the audacious attempt. After the 1962 escape, security measures were heightened and Alcatraz's reputation as an escape-proof prison was put to the test. However, there were still a few attempted escapes. Two prisoners named John Paul Scott and Darl Lee Parker attempted to float away on a makeshift raft. Their bodies were found in the bay, reinforcing the dangers of trying to escape from the island prison. In total, there were 14 known escape attempts involving 36 inmates during the years Alcatraz operated as a federal penitentiary from 1934 to 1963. Despite the efforts, the fate and whereabouts of Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers remained unknown, and they were officially declared presumed drowned in 1979. Decades later, the echoes of the Alcatraz escape persist. The story of their daring bid for freedom, filled with intricate details and unexpected twists, stands as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit against the backdrop of Alcatraz's indomitable walls. The case has continued to capture public interest and remains one of the most famous unsolved mysteries in American criminal history. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this story, please hit that like button, also share, and leave a comment.